Test, 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 are you there? Test, 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 are you there? Bam, ba 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 bam, bam, ba 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 bam, bam, ba 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 bam, ba 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 bam, ba 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 bam, bam, ba 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 bam, bam, ba 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 bam, ba 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 bam, bam, doodly doodly doo dee doo. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I'm your host, Dallas. And um, last week, if you joined us, I was painting Enchantress, and we were doing her kind of a dark, uh, dark metal uh, kind of goth style with some dark purples and lots of blacks, having a lot of fun on her. Um, and we're going to continue that this week. If you checked uh, Shick out earlier on Tuesday, and last Tuesday, he painted up She-Hulk. She looked super awesome. Hopefully, I get to mine soon. Look at her, she's super cool. About to bust some fool in the face with an eye beam. Love it so much. But we're here to paint Enchantress part two. So let's kick it over and do it. If I find the right button, that one, boom. So I didn't really do much after the um, after stream. I, um, I did paint the underside of this uh, front of her cloak here because I, want, I like flipping the miniature upside down for that and that's really hard to do on stream. But let's see, let's grab a couple paint brushes. I got four to choose from. But where are we at? Oh yeah, let's highlight. We're still highlighting. We're still just having fun. We're painting her up. Just doing fun stuff. We're just gonna use the tip of our brush on the side. Do some more highlights. I swear I got the worst brush in the world right now. Thing is not holding point. That's okay. We're gonna make it work for us. Let's do some little scribbles to show soft cloth. Remember, this is like a purple over top of our zenith. Um, I went back and added black, did black over top of that. She's got these cool little circle designs on her costume. These were a fun engineering uh, puzzle for the engineering team. It's a lot, it's pretty interesting, right? When you're working with, um, you know, when you're working with uh, designs that exist for, um, you know, 80 plus years, and then you got, Turn those into miniatures, right? There's a lot to, lot to grok and figure out. You know, it's not like we can just change the design. Although we do, we do get, we do a little here and there to make things work. So you, we can adjust, you know, you adjust where we can. We talked about before, uh, you know, Wolverine's costume and making some adjustments for plastic. Got to make it producible. So it's like the very first thing we got to think about, right? Does us no good if we can't make it. How's everybody today? And hopefully everybody's ready for the holidays. I know I am. I think I got big plans. Big plans to do a whole lot of nothing. 
probably paint. Got a couple of painting projects. Need to finish my Cyclops. Funny thing is I've had the construction terrain probably longer than anybody else and I don't have it done yet. I got, got behind. Need to catch up on my construction terrain painting. Tim says painting holiday. I agree. So I'm about let's take a holiday to eat food and paint miniatures. Paint some Marvel Crisis protocols. And who knows what else? Sitting around on my desk. Let's add a little pink to that purple. Put a little edge highlight on this headpiece. Fozzie says, getting Thanos. For the holiday, paint, paint up Thanos over the break. I love it. Thanos is a great, that's a great holiday uh, paint project. You know, with the throne, there's a lot going on there to work on. So very cool project for the break. Just darken that up. Smooth it out. Let's kick more magenta pink to that side. Not on that side though. Use that second brush to do a little fade there. I painted two Thanoses. Uh, I just had to. Thought it'd be a lot of fun. Rebased one to be more city street. Um, you know, did a little conversion work on the base to make it a city street because I wanted to show like uh, the non-gauntlet Thanos kind of street on the street on the ground right he's just showed up to New York he's about to throw down against the Avengers uh, to collect you know collect the stones maybe right I wanted a version that was the non-stone version and then the uh, second one, I did the more traditional color scheme, the very blues, golds on the uh, throne base, you know, for playing in the cosmic encounter. And uh, that gave, it gave me the option to do two different uh, paint styles, too, and two different paint colors. So I did the, I need some metals while we're talking. Uh, so I did like black and brass for the non-gauntlet version, right? To show that he's, you know, leading the Black Order to come and get the stones. Um, and then I did the full comic, you know, the classic comic look, right? To, to For the ultimate encounter, right? Because that's what, that's what I want whenever I uh, go to the local game store. It's like, let's do the ultimate counter. Like, I want that classic Thanos to kind of bust out on the table, get stuck in, and uh, just, well, hopefully win because I'm playing. Maybe the heroes will win. I play Thanos and I root for Thanos. 
Yeah, full comics. Thanos is great. That blue and gold just works so well together. Right. Uh, I definitely went with the big smiley face because I just I just get a kick out of that. Yeah, paint the throne separate from dice. That's a good idea. Uh, it's it's not hard to get behind the throne, uh, but you know it can definitely help if if that's if you you know if you feel like you need it. Um, I'm I'm definitely a person that's like a if my brush can't reach it you can't see it kind of kind of guy. So I kind of like. So I kind of like, uh, just kind of let, let things happen. Let the paint lie where it, where it lands. I don't know. Okay, if you remember last week, my cape was not taking paint very well. I don't know what I did. I must have touched it. Maybe I was cooking bacon too close to her. Here's my... Uh, where, where's that at? Oh yeah, Fozzie says has to finish Storm and Cyclops before Thanos gets on the table. Here's my Cyclops I'm working on. Not quite done, but I'm going with a. I'm, I'm trying something different, just a little something different. Want to go with a kind of unique design. Of course, I still need to paint the red on the X symbol and the um, the optic beam or the his uh, visor. But I want to go with like a, a real dark blue. I mean, that blue sh shades all the way down in the black. Um, and then a very gray black for the uh, straps and armor plates. Oh, yeah, Big Bang Any Thinks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different, but not crazy, right? It's like it's, it's, it's very much paying homage to like mini suits, um, which we like to do. We're like, you know, we like to take our twist here at Atomic Mass Games. So a lot of fun. I love the sculpt. Super great, fun miniature, classic Cyclops. Got his little foot up on like a little bit of, you know, danger room debris or maybe the Sentinel, right? We like our debris here. Um, remember, that's a crisis, and when there's a crisis, there's a mess, right? The heroes can't just fight in a in a clean street. Um, what was I saying? You know, uh, the, uh, oh man, I can't remember her name. Ah, uh, ah, uh, the group that comes and grabs, uh, cleans up after the heroes. It's not the bulldog, not the wrecking crew. Come on, Dallas. Oh boy, gosh. Why well, can't I think about it? Because I'm thinking about painting. Shake is going to kill me. Damage control. Damage control hasn't come through and cleaned up after the battle yet. That's why there's debris everywhere. Still in the middle of the battle, kids. Still, t still a tussle going on. So like yeah, when we were doing Cyclops, I was definitely like, like, it's like an internal part of a, you know, a Sentinel maybe, right? He's just optic blasted some Sentinel. Chair Simone is damage control. And I feel like BK is is uh, damage control too now. When do we get Sentinel miniature to go along with it? Oh, that'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? I wonder how big it'd be. Soul guitar gears now has X Men on the way. That's amazing. So 
So you can definitely Wampa. Uh, Schick did a whole video about how to convert the bases. Like um, to me, this is a blank base in my eyes uh, because it's just a piece of plastic. So I can put whatever I want on this. Um, you know, I can take some pine bark and some pumice gel, right? I can I can make this whatever kind. I can make this an alien base. Um, you know, a little scraping and a little plastic card, you know, you can make this a tech base. It's very easy. Like, to me, that is a blank base. So you can kind of do whatever you want. Let your imagination go wild. It was a hobby miniatures game after all. Cage. built my damage control truck a couple of days. I love the ga the the damage control uh, garbage truck. Love that thing so much. Lance Park, what is this color scheme based off of? Anything? Uh, no, I'm just making it up. I'm just having fun, hanging out. We're just uh, painting some miniatures. I uh, thought it'd be fun to just. I pitched the idea out uh, last. Thursday, uh, right before stream, I was like, give me some ideas. Uh, let the community kind of pick. Uh, community, one person in the community said, um, one person in the community said, uh, do like a, a death metal or, or heavy metal. And like, I, I, in my head, I thought that that meant like, you know, like, uh, do a bunch of metallics and then i was like but then i started like rampaging through i was like no no let's go let's go fun let's let's make it a little goth oh boy that scarlet witch miniature that we showed off uh in the uh the reveal trailer like how'd that feel what y'all think of that Love to hear what you guys, what y'all think. Seems like we're getting a very powerful version of Scarlet Witch, yeah? It might be true. It was a lot of fun working on uh, her and getting those, uh, like the idea was to get the circles around her hands, but not not touching her hands. So it was a lot of fun working on that and um, working with the sculptor to get that look to it and then refining that chaotic crackle right into a miniature form. Uh, any tips for paint capes? Uh, well, if, if everybody's okay with uh, one second of silence, I'll go grab my Thor cape and explain what I did on Thor, and then we can talk about some different ideas. One second. I'm still going to be here. I'm not abandoning you. Here, I just grabbed my, just grabbed my whole tray. Just the whole tray of Crisis Protocol figures. Miniatures. All right, let's grab Thor, because I did him different.
All right, so for capes, there's a couple of different ways you can go. Um, this, I'm doing a solid, I did a solid black base coat, coming back with a little highlight, and I'm doing a two brush blend uh, to kind of like stretch the paint out over the large surface. Uh, I love large surface areas to work with. Um, they really let me kind of get in there and have a lot of fun with blends. Um, also, I'm only working with a couple of colors, right? You're not, you're not switching colors and going from a bunch of different elements. You know, like if it, there was belts and straps and buckles and uh, filigree all over it or all over anything. This is a, this you're able to like kind of focus on like those two colors, right? On capes. And so I like those big surface areas for working. A lot of fun. So this cape, I'm just kind of like doing that, like focusing on the large surface. Um, Wampa says, wow, to the, uh, uh, maybe I'll take a picture of my collection uh, in a, uh, sometime soon. But with, but with Thor, what I did, Thor I did very quick. I did a different approach. What I did on Thor was actually, I utilized that Zenith Prime I'm focused. There we go. I utilized the Zenithal Prime and I used a red glaze. And this is very messy, it's not perfect. Um, and I glazed over it and uh, the Zenith, you know, there's still dark here, there's light up here because of the Zenith. So I glazed over it and then I did a spot wash. So I'm just like putting blue wash in different areas, focusing on the bottom of the cape and the deep recesses. And then I did a real quick highlight, just catching the flips and folds of the cape, right? So I did a very different approach here. Very quick, very dirty. And then we're here, I'm focusing more on that, a blend, right? And I just kind of choose what I want when I'm working on, the, on each miniature, each project, kind of whatever I'm feeling, right? Not really, not necessarily tying myself to one technique or style. I'm just letting my, just let my collection grow and be unique. Yeah, the blue, uh, the blue on something like Strange's Cloak, right? You want to add blue to the shadows there. Uh, 12 um, what I tend to do is that's when I get a little more precise like I'll stick a little blue in there and it won't be necessarily a wash or it's what I call a spot wash so I'm very much controlling the wash and just letting it be messy but just let controlling where it lies right the blend doesn't have to be perfect it's just getting it down that shadow and letting it, uh, controlling where it stays. Like this is definitely not gonna be perfect. It's gonna have water, bathtub rings, but that's cool. Let's see this underside here. Maybe we'll put a drop shadow in there. Who knows? Yeah, it's about that practice and and figuring out twelve. Um, you know, it took me, it took me a little bit to figure it out. You know, I I've been painting for a long time, and you know, I take classes and ask a lot of questions. And one big thing I I've learned is you gotta fail, and I'm okay with failing, right? Sometimes you just gotta fail. Sometimes you gotta use the blend brush as the apply brush and the apply brush as a blend brush and just have a mess, whatever. Yeah, I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad, I'm like how Dallas is quick and dirty is worth better my son, pristine. Uh, 
Yeah, well, it's just about practice, right? Like, let's get together, and it's not a competition, you know, until you enter a competition. That's different, but we're not talking about competition. Um, it's not a competition. I'm not here to beat you. I'm, we're here on the same. We're here on the same journey, just two different points. But we're all in it together. We're all in it together. I uh, can't really fail. Like as long as you get painted, that's all I care about. I get painted. Like you just gotta look at the. You gotta look back and just be like, yeah, that could have been better. You know, whatever. I learned my lesson. More tools in the toolbox for next time. More tools in the toolbox for next time. There are all kinds of measures that I'm like, oh, I could have done better, but I didn't. So I guess next time is when I'll do better. And for me, like I, I, I teach, uh, I teach about using thin paints. You know, everybody paints differently. Um, I paint with very thin paints. It's very hard to actually, quote quote, ruin the miniature if it's thin. Uh, you know, I can paint. I, I could right now. I've been painting this cape for a few minutes, and if. If I wanted to, I could totally switch to a different color cape, right? It's not going to hurt it. Um, you know, I'm not painting very thick. I'm not using a lot of paint. It allows me flexibility. Also, like Wampa just said, um, learning how to correct mistakes, right? So, like, um, that, that right there, let's see, let me grab a little paint. Like, that's a bad place for a dot, correct? That's a terrible place for a dot. Oops. Grab a damp brush. That dot's gone. Like, learning how to do that. Also, uh, I use scrubby brushes. I call them scrubby brushes. You can call them whatever you want. I prefer, personally like scrubby brush. Something like this little guy. You just nip the tip down, make a little scrub brush and you can you can scrub away a layer of paint very easily Fozzie uh, I saw a snippet of my Doctor Strange oh I got that guy right here Maybe Enchantress, you're in the way. There we go. Finished him up. We did him on stream a little bit. He's got some sparks flying around him. Very punchy, very purple. I like purples. Oh, I got the whole collection over here now. Alright, where are we at? Let's throw a little bounce light on the bottom. Uh, well, it's going to be blue probably. So let's take a little blue. Take a little purple. I'm just making this up. There's no rules. Uh, rules are silly. Yeah, pretty happy with Strange. That was, uh, you know, Shake and I talked on streams before about, like, the design process and, um, you know, learning how to work with different material, the, you know, different materials. So, uh, learning how to work with plastic and what plastic is capable of doing, right? In my head, I kind of know, but, like, you got to, like, 
it's once again it's a you know kind of a it's okay to try and not perfect nail it every time or when you first start out right it's like you gotta try stuff out and you gotta see what you're capable of and uh, Doctor Strange was one of those ones one of those early ones where we were really pushing what we could do right and like what can we do um, so the design doc of that was like uh, once I kind of came on that like floating in the circles idea and like there there was definitely a moment where we were where we were all like can we do this like is this even possible like that that seems like like wow you know so and uh the kind of the pose actually uh was inspired by a comic panel found a comic panel kind of the pose of of what we wanted and it was a matter of like turning it into a miniature with that cool uh, that cool idea of the, the circles. So a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Okay, we started the magic. We decided to go with like a teal magic. So I'm just gonna start blending in some blues. And such. Maybe get a little purple in there. Just, just hints of purple, I think. glaze that over and the the first coat of this was very imperfect and I kind of want that I want to maintain that like imperfect feel to the mystic elements so like these little white spots oh you can't see it um, let me raise that up so these white spots were the where I just kind of slapped the paint and the paint didn't didn't grab because I was just slopping it. I'm actually going to utilize that in the paint job. I'm going to I'm going to use that to accentuate uh, the the mystical, ethereal nature of it. Carefree llama, are the lines under your eyes part of the scope? Look so cool. No, uh, I went in uh, freehanded those on last week uh, to kind of go with my my color scheme and my. Uh, my my uh, design here just something I wanted to try out everybody voted for uh, death metal enchantress so of course you can't have death metal enchantress without some pretty dope uh, black eye makeup and a sick purple uh, black purple costume That's how you go to the rock shows. Gotta go to the rock show. All right, a little more purple. Grab a little magenta, maybe. Keeping that teal base. Go to the backside. Something like this. Want the back to be a little darker. Uh, we need some of that. Actually, we need some of that teal back. And it's somewhere laying around here. Doctor Strange forever. Doctor Strange is pretty cool. Uh, I uh, picked up the uh, Chris Bacello uh, trade paperback. Um, I love the Chris Bacello art style. Um, really really love his 
way that he invokes uh, the character silhouettes and um, just style and started reading that a lot of fun the moment when Doctor Strange has an axe is you know it's a mystic axe but he doesn't have any super he doesn't have any mystic powers it's like so working my way through that All right, see you later, 12. See you next week. We're going to have enchant or uh, not enchanters. We're painting enchanters. Don't be a fool. Um, next week, we'll be painting up. I believe the plan is both Chick and I are going to be painting up the uh, really awesome looking one that I cannot wait for. Um, wait, no, was, I thought that was BK or Josh getting ready to tell me to wait. I'm not allowed to talk. Uh, I don't know what Lancelot's telling me to wait for. Uh, we'll be painting up this ultimate in wickedness, Angela. Love this mentor. Super excited to like. Uh, work on this and uh, once again this was one where like you know the design doc once I was drawing the de uh, the design doc I got two, I got a paintbrush in my mouth uh, it was like can we do this can we accomplish this and I was just like you know what I think we can so um, really 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 fun miniature really really dynamic super excited to paint her up Yeah, Bacallo on Uncanny X-Men. Anything Bacallo. Uh, he did the uh, Spider-Man uh, lizard uh, story. I think he did some other ones, but I, I have the story Shed. Um, I just think that that story is a lot of fun. Really cool. Uh, Chris Bacallo did the art on it. and uh, That's a fun little read. I think it's four issues. But Bacallo doing the lizard was just neat. Yeah, Angela definitely has lots of sharp objects. You know? Being Odin's daughter. She's got the tools of a... Of a as guardian warrior, right? So we'll be painting her up. Super stoked. All right, let's just add some white. White, what's the color I want? Maybe a little off-white, maybe a little pink. Got a little pink. Keeps it warm. Start working on some highlights and I'm just going to kind of be erratic once again like I said I'm going to let sort of imperfect application of paint at the beginning kind of be useful to me so I'm going to use some little dots and accentuate the dotting effect use some lines for the larger whoosh surface Strange Angel and She-Hawk in the list, my three favorite miniatures, yeah. I like a big bruiser list. I love a big bruiser list. Alright, like I said, I'm just gonna just kind of letting letting my let my brush kind of like go where it wants to go not really controlling this too much just kind of seeing where some light areas would be cool there's no wrong way to do this it's magic 
So like if you accidentally highlight down in a recess, you know, that's fine. Some wizardy stuff. That was a little black paint from uh, when I was painting her foot. Accidentally got on the mystic. That's fine. Let's go some dots around her feet to kind of like maybe highlight where she's touching. Just doing a bunch of little dots, letting them collect up. Yeah, magic and smoke, Tim, uh, a lot of fun to work on. There's there's no, you know, there's rules, but a lot of times you can just kind of ignore the rules and just go with whatever you want. Just have a lot of fun. Yeah, you can't overdo the white, Wampa. I'm, I'm going to be real honest. You can't overdo the white. Um, I do the same thing. I actually, uh, a lot of my crisis protocol is I don't even get to the, I don't even add the white stage to the zenith. I just do um, the black and a gray. Um, Yeah, it's worse to leave too much black. You want just a little bit of black just to keep the shadows. Um, but like, I, I typically don't even go all the way to white. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. That's um, This Enchantress was not taken to white. Um, but I, I do sometimes, and when I do, I do the same thing you do. I'll take that and I'll bring that white in, and I'll really focus in on areas like the face. Right, or if they have a mystic sword, or um, you know, like crystal, I might focus on like uh, where her flame is, um, and like that way I get a little more punch there. But yeah, it's it's really more about the black, as uh, Big Bad Andy says. Like you can see, there's hardly any actual black left on the underside. I I I really would just want that gray. Um, with some volume, right? I just, you just need a little volume on there. This needs a little more color. Let's put a little magenta. Let's grab a little magenta. That makes that magenta into the teal. Let's get some swirls out in the midtones with this. Yeah, there's no there's no right or wrong. Um there's no right or wrong. I, I you know, I, I adjust and just do different things at different ways and see what happens. Oh, Kevin, you never asked that question. Uh, they're all my favorites. I don't have favorites. 
Like, I love everything we get to work on, and uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, we take a lot of pride in what we do, and, you know, so it's hard to have a favorite. Yeah, if you leave a lot of black, the black will stay pretty black, right? So it, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. I like a lot more color in places, and I can always add black if I want to get sort of different. This needs yellow. That's what it needs. It needs some warmth. It needs some warmth, kids. It needs some warmth. Let's take a little yellow. Put it off to the side here. I got a wet palette going on. Desaturate that with that white. Remember, white and black desaturates. So I typically don't use a lot of pure white and pure black, especially when creating shades and highlights. Unless you're trying to desaturate, that's a different story altogether. We're just going to put a little very desaturated yellow glaze here and there. And I'm going to keep this so subtle. It's not about like having it punchy in there. Saturation and desaturation, I can totally explain that. So saturation is a lot of color. Like we'll keep this real simple. We don't have time to do two days of uh, color theory. Um, saturation is punch. It's that vivid brightness of color, right? Of the of the hue. Um, desaturation is when you're taking away that pigment. You're taking away that vibrancy. So. When you add colors, um, when you add color to your um, red and your yellow, white and black, even though they darken it, so they change the value, value is bright to dark. So it changes the value, so you think you're getting a highlight, but it also increase or de increase or decreases your saturation so it desaturates it removes um, the color and you 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 know it when you see it especially let's uh let's look at let's let's desaturate a color real quick I'm gonna get rid of that let's desaturate a color let's find a very saturated color so let's go with like red um, this is close to like a primary red. See how bright and just poppy red that is, right? That's, that's a high saturation red. Now if I add white to that, of course you're going to get pink, right? You want to start to get pink and as you stretch that out and add more white it gets less of that punchiness you're desaturating it you're losing saturation same thing if you add black to red right it takes away that saturation now if you want dark colors but you don't want to lose saturation you can do things like add orange into red Right, if you add orange and red, you can maintain, you can create the, um, you can create a highlight and maintain saturation. So maybe you add a little yellow, right? So you're increasing the value, but maintaining that saturation. That's a terrible yellow to use. So that's like a quick, just a quick, quick rundown. 
So you can use colors to saturate and desaturate. Like sometimes you can use uh, dull green to desaturate um, um, your base color, um, which is super useful if you want to create contrast. There's different types of contrast. A lot like when you think of contrast, a lot of times you think of white and black, right? You're thinking of very, very bright highlights, very, very dark shadows. But there's other types of um, there's other types of contrast. There's hot, cold contrast, right? Which is kind of what we're playing with here. This purple is a very warm tone. It's like if you think of this purple, you 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 think like if especially if you cover up the blue, right? It's a very warm to it, tone. It invokes a warmth to it, right? And then you get this contrast by adding a very cool blue, right? We're doing teal. We're mixing some other colors in there to add vibrancy and life. But these two together create contrast. So you have hot, cold contrast. You have light, dark contrast. You have textural contrast. Textural contrast, things that are very smooth, like the cape or the flesh, and then things that are very textural, like these little dots I'm putting all over the magic, right? So the, it, you're, you're just going back and forth between all these contrasts. And you also have saturation or value contrast. So things like this high saturation magenta hair against this very desaturated black cape, right? The cape looks very interesting or helps make the rest of it look interesting by being more desaturated. I removed a lot of color from it. I'm using no colors. It's all black and gray. So it keeps it very desaturated. It keeps it very tonally neutral to push my vibrancy forward, right? The black goes back. The vibrancy comes forward. It makes it more visually interesting and pops out to the viewer as you're looking at it. So, big bad idea. Figure out yellow to light and greens. Yeah, instead of white, right? Which what you're doing is when you're adding white, you're desaturating the green. You're just removing green. That's all white and black really does is remove the color. Um, it lightens it. It brings up the value, and or it darkens it. Brings down the value. But you're just removing green. If you add yellow. You're still going to get some desaturation um, unless you punch it up with like a lot of inks. There's a lot of ways to do this. But you're increasing the value while maintaining more of the saturation, right? So you're kind of doing both at the same time there. Um, same way with like if you add um, a turquoise to green. If you add a turquoise or a blue to green, you can lower the value so it makes it darker. But it may, will it will maintain its um, it will maintain saturation much longer, right? So it stays more punchy. It stays more uh, sharp. Woo! We're getting philosophical, kids. Color theory is interesting, and um, you know if you just do a cursory, like spend a little cursory time. Uh, just Google searching it you can learn lots of really neat stuff um, it's definitely not mandatory it's really not mandatory um, and also there's times where you can actually break the rules and that's even more fun because um, rules are made to be broken that's what I always say until I get in trouble for breaking the rules So once again, my neutral coat, cloak added a little white uh, sharp in the highlights here. Uh, yeah, Big Bad Andy, like l learning how to use saturated and desaturated colors, it, it gets you more in like watching like if you watch how I paint and like listen while I'm painting, I'm doing a lot of that. Like I might not be explaining it as we go along here because we're talking about lots of different fun things. Um, you know, but I, I'm, I'm always doing it even when I'm painting here on the stream. I'm always using those saturation and desaturation to create the contrast. So if you see me doing something, ask me about it, and I, I'll be more than happy to explain why we're doing it too, right? 
I, I like the Ys. And honestly, sometimes, like the way I paint, sometimes the Y is just it feels good. It is art, after all. And sometimes you just got to do the art to feel good, um, which is what I mean by rules are made to be broken. Like sometimes, sometimes you look at the rule and you figure out a way to break it, right? Next thing you know, you're adding weird colors into places you never thought it worked. Like, like candy apple green or periwinkle into flesh tones. You never know. I'm gonna lose cannon sometimes. Except for right now. See, I'm getting in trouble. Those rules are never meant to be broken. Wampo Stampa says, Dallas, I want your Gen Con video making colors pop. I want you to mention how colors compete with each other. It just clicked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Colors can compete, right? Like, colors will fight against one another. Uh, so learning learning what the, uh, learning that the colors are fighting for your attention. And you can paint around it or use it to your advantage, right? Like like I said, rules are made to be broken. Sometimes you find a rule and you're just like, I can do this. I can make it work. Is there really nothing I can, no, no rule I can break today? VK, come on, come on. Yeah, real world, real world like that, that uh, I want to use the word muddy, and I don't think it's a fair word, but I think most people understand. If you want a more realistic feel, you kind of desaturate. Um, like MCP, definitely. Um, I use a lot of brighter colors, more vivid colors. Uh, do I have something really poppy over here? Or really desaturated? Like my Venom is pretty desaturated, right? Like there's a, it's all purples. Everything in there is a purple but it's all very desaturated. Even the tongue is is very desaturated. I used a lot, I put a lot of gray actually into the pink to make the tongue. Whereas like something like, you know, Thanos is just all punch. Like that's, that's high saturation right there. Just tons and tons and tons of blue with a bright purple shadow, right, to create the contrast. I didn't go black. There's no black on that suit at all. It's it's all just purples and magentas in the right amount against the blue to create that high contrast. Um, who else? Who else has a really interesting color? Like Hella. Once again, that's using the blacks mixed into the green and then greens with no black and then greens with just blues it's so like this green here is green and blue the blue is the shadows so i'm using that to create that and then the green on the suit uses just greens and then the body suit is blacks and greens and then the magic is yellow and green so it's all greens just with different things to create all that contrast and, and four very unique uh, green tones across the same miniature, right? So you can learn to play with those colors and get what you want out of it as you develop the skill and um, the ability to do so. Who has something with... And then learning how to use blacks, like that's a very blue black. So it's all blue blacks. Or if you do something like Corvus's cape, it's all gray black and green black. So, so very different feels on those. So that that's what it's all about. It's all about that. I can break all the painting rules. I did break all the painting rules today. I did not break any of the release rules. All right, it looks like it's two o'clock. So I'm gonna switch it back over to this other camera. That's me, hello. So hopefully that was fun and enjoyable. A lot of philosophy, a lot of color theory. 
Um, definitely, if you if you if you want to learn more, um, do do a quick Google search. You can learn about color theory. Um, learn how to apply those different colors in different places. Um, you don't need a lot, right? You don't have to be super in depth. Just a little knowledge can take you a long ways. Um, and just remember, like, add color to your base tones to create highlights and shadows. You don't have to go white and black. Um, you can, so you can get a more punchy feel, right? And get a more vibrant feel to it. Um, remember, next week, Tuesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, join Mr. Will Schick. He'll be painting up, I believe, Angela. Uh, Thursday, join me, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, for, I believe, Angela, I think, um, for the last of the um, streams of the year, our um, Atomic Mass Transmissions Live for the year. Before we take our wonderful winter break, and we'll be back in the new year, and the new year is looking up to be super exciting for everybody. So that's that's going to be super fun. So anyways, until next time, remember, check us out on... That's the wrong one, this one. Check us out on uh, Instagram, Atomic Mass Transmissions, uh, Twitter and Facebook for all your latest news, information, announcements, and spoilers that are allowed and not spoilers that are not allowed here boo so until next time we'll catch you later and bye <laughs>